We've got a great new system in the lab that I know our audience is going to be thrilled about. The Discord's already buzzing over this thing. This is the 45 drives. Well, actually, more appropriately, it's the Home Lab. It's the Home Lab 15 or HL15 that holds 15 drives. Right. From the company is 45 drives, yes. but they call themselves what? Uh, 45 Home Lab. For this so, brand. For this brand. So 45 Home Lab by 45 drives. Systems, the HL15 available in black and white and various different configurations. I don't even know what we've got in here. Yeah. And actually, normally, normally the first thing that happens when devices come in like this is Kevin will rip off the little packing slip and, and investigate it and then start throwing crap on the floor. Yeah, we don't even know what's in here. We know we've got rails over there, but we don't know what config we have. We don't know what color it is. <laughs> it could be hate mail for all we know. The, People know me, and uh, there's a good chance that 45 tribes <laughs> went with an epic troll and sent us a case of bricks. It wouldn't surprise me, and they, well, I would have deserved it, quite honestly. Rip this thing open, bro. Let's see what we got going right. on in here. Like we said, we really have no idea what's inside of this thing, and I know that some creators already have received their units and have started to do teardowns and videos, and that's great. It may just be the same thing all those guys have. We do have a little twist plan though for ours. Of course, we're the storage guys, so we're looking to see what we can do in terms of storage, performance, and, uh, and connectivity. So ours is the white, unless that's a uh, sticker on the side, yeah? <coughs> yeah. Congratulations on becoming the owner of an HL15. I've actually, I like, I like how it's autographed and signed by the, uh, the person it was tested with. I wish uh, children came with a little certificate like that. To, <laughs> Express your joy. All right, what do you want to do? Packaging impressions seem pretty good and robust. It's got the nice, heavy, dense foam, so it yeah. won't uh, go anywhere. All right. Um, I can crane it out from this way, and you can pull away the box and throw it, maybe? Yeah, I like the All part right. where you pick up the heavy thing. They've almost themed this in our colors. This is fantastic, but I think this is a standard option Yeah, it as is well. standard, but I do agree. It, uh... They picked the right one for us. So I know the one thing when we talked about these guys and we had the briefing, they were really excited about the engineering. The Canadians really have done a number on this thing from, from their description. What's your first take taking this thing out of the box? Yeah, it's definitely some thicker. I think they advertised it as 16 gauge steel and they did say everything is screwed together. So it looks like around the edges, they've got these press fit fittings uh, for the standoffs and then there's nuts and bolts everywhere. I mean, that kind of yields, you know, into a, highly customizable platform. If you wanted to take a panel off and change the color on it and have it recoded, it'd be almost trivial to do since it's all bolted. Yeah, I mean, it feels nice, it feels sturdy. You can tell sometimes when we get these cheap enclosures or cases how they're a little flexy to yeah, them. Yeah, there's none of there's that There's not here. much flex happening here, none, none at all, actually, as we, as we squeeze it. Yeah. I can tell already by looking at the back, we've got the fully built model. So let's take a look at what's inside. Which is actually important because when you look at the HL15 website, there's a couple core decisions you've got to make. The chassis and backplane, chassis, backplane, and PSU, and then the fully built, fully burned in that tops out at, uh, at $2,000. If you scroll down though, actually a little bit too, you can see the color choices. And then there's some decisions on how you want your 10 gig, how much RAM you want and your uh, power based on your location. And they've also got some, some options and add-ons. We're gonna do our own options and add-ons and we do have the rail kit. But overall, the ordering process is like four choices. It's really simple. Uh, obviously, this is what the white one looks like. And to Jordan's point, this is the fully assembled, fully burned in. All we've got to do is bring our storage, which we've done. We've, you've got some other things though that aren't storage. Yeah, these are some special tools that we'll use later. We've got a 200 gig NIC. Uh, some add-in cards and some 30 terabyte SSDs and uh, I got a pile of GPUs that we're going to pull from as well. So I think when they drew this up, they would probably have said this is primarily a hard drive system, but of course Jordan and Kevin go straight to the reservoir storage and pull out the flash drives, understood. I also did make an inquiry about uh, some special drives that might give this thing a little more speed and capacity. All right, let's get this unscrewed, get the lid off and see what we've got inside. They are captive thumb screws. Yes. That's always That's a, a nice idea. Oh, oh, these guys know us. All right, so we've ripped this thing open. Jordan's super excited, wants to grab everything. I also got Kevin because uh, he's really interested in the teardown of, of this system as well. And he has more hands-on time in some of these systems than anybody. Jordan, what do you got 
in your hand here. You're already excited over this thing, huh? Yeah, it looks like they included some of the optional uh, three and a half to two and a half inch adapters that you can screw in the drives. They're, they are 3D printed and the model is available um, if you needed to print some of your own. But these are really cool because it gives you the flexibility to put in any SATA drive that you want. So if we were to get 15 of those really nice AliExpress drives for three bucks a piece, we could get these printed out and be on our way. Yeah, so look at this. It's designed for a seven mil drive. You're not gonna put a thicker one in this. So even though this motherboard, and we'll get to it, this motherboard will support SAS connections, the uh, blanks that they offer are just for common uh, seven mil uh, height SSDs. All right, so before we get to the motherboard, what are we looking at here? We've got three fans across the front of the chassis. We've got the PCB that'll take the 15 SATA SAS drives and another bank of fans here in the middle. What's your initial take on the front third of this? So my initial take, especially taking out the cover, this thing, there's no rough edges. They did a fantastic job producing this case. Everything is nice, it's soft, it's power coated compared to some, even some of the tier two servers that we get in that um, when we've, you start we've, taking- We've bled on some of these things. Yes. It's right, so a really nicely built, as Kevin says, no sharp edges, no uncomfortable bits. Although there are some interesting areas. So um, normally when you're putting in uh, PCI slots, um, you can't really see it. I'm gonna move angles real quick. So when you're looking at this case, they use uh, the not fully cut out uh, PCI blanks, which it's good in theory, but you're still left with, you make a decision, you put a card in and you remove the card and all of a sudden you have an open slot because you don't have a blank to put in. We've never seen a case design like this from any other vendor. Well, they built this from zero. So this is part of the 45 drives or 45 home lab design that was purpose built for this use case. So one item I like seeing on this, and we this has been a downside of some of the top loading designs is um, you run the problem of say you, you're putting a drive in, you let go, and the thing slams down. They have a spring included on here, which I'm assuming is someone's destroyed a back plane once or twice, and you realize all you need to do is provide a little bit of friction on the side of the drive, and it keeps it safe. And that isn't a design we've seen incorporated into even some of the uh, top tier uh, systems. Well, and this is a non-caddy design too, obviously, that you're showing there, but that little that little flex clip on the side, which can't be very expensive, does provide that friction you're talking yeah, you're, about. You're, you're going to save a back plane uh, right. from just one drop. I mean, you're going to, you, it saves you from a ton of heartache. Okay, well, we've already done the third, first third. We're back to the first third again. You're getting a little scattered here, buddy. Is it you're so excited for this HL15, you can't control yourself? Yeah, and another nice aspect of this is they're not leveraging a mini ITX board with a integrated Xeon uh, processor. So and we've seen plenty of those. Yeah, this is a full fledged, scalable uh, server CPU, and part of what that brings are some nice onboard devices. We have a uh, Broadcom 3008 series uh, SAS controller built in. So instead of having some really weird um, SATA backplane design that's gonna be kind of proprietary for certain driver setups, it's gonna be able to offer universal support for almost any um, Linux, Windows, and other environments. Let's get into the board a little bit. Super micro board and full CPU on top, not an integrated unit as you said. What's uh, got you excited here? So it's a Intel scalable Gen 2 processor. It's a 3204 um, CPU, which is a six core model. It's part of the Bronze series. It's not, I mean, if you were building out a uh, virtualization platform, you might, go, you might elect a higher core count, but for a platform such as this, you have a lot of compute power built in and a lot of cool enterprise features alongside of it. Going beyond that, you have a uh, by 16 slot. You can use this for 100 gig, 200 gig, a, um, 200 gig, yeah. GPU. There's a bit of a debate though. Jordan wants to put the GPU in there, which is also excessive, but might also be fun. You know, feel free to vote in the comments, but we can support the GPU, right, Kevin? Yeah, I mean, it's it'll work, it will fit, and they've also included all the uh, different uh, power cables that would normally come in, uh, equipped with this uh, Corsair power supply. They also include a lot of additional screws, feet, cable management, uh, zip ties and everything to really get this thing tidy once you have it configured. Well, that helps you do the rack mount versus standard tower mount too, right? Yeah, so on the back of this case, uh, you have your uh, normal power connector on it, but you also have a uh, COM port. You have your uh, out-of-band management, which isn't included on a lot of these uh, platforms. You have uh, two onboard uh, 10 gig ports. So even if you don't uh, add an additional 100, 200 gig uh, networking, you still have uh, some onboard connectivity. You left out the best part, the clicky button. Yes, you have clicky buttons. It's a it's a fidget uh, button on the back. Doesn't matter whatsoever. Hopefully, it's not connected to anything. 
All right, so with all of that done, the hardware overview complete, I think it's time that I get out of the way, let Kevin and Jordan build this thing up, and let's get this bad boy testing. Yeah, we got a lot of exciting hardware to put in here and really max this thing out. All right, let's roll. All right, oh. well, Kevin hunts down the, fry, the pliers. I'm going to go ahead and get started installing our Western Digital 22 terabyte drives. We've got a handful of the gold and some of the NAS reds. All right, so we got our two 30 terabyte QLCs. Now we're going to throw in an Optane 900P. And I think that's the 280 gig one. 280 gigs, it says here on the back. And then because I think it would be great to be able to have a ton of transcode capabilities, as well as possibly a Parsec gaming server, we're going to go ahead and slam in the A4000 and work with our dual 10 gig networking for now. Yes, and to go along with that, uh, because it will offer the highest performance, I don't know if we're going to use TrueNAS. I think we're, uh, I mean, Windows might be a good bet there. And what I was thinking is, we can game, you can have your games on a ton of capacity, and you can also have uh, shared folders out, so you still get the shared storage aspect. There's a keyboard and mouse right over here. There's no, yeah, but that's not the ones with the color dots on Oh my on God, them. but. So when I left last night, Jordan and Kevin were doing a live stream with the HL15, showing our Discord and social media audience all the cool stuff about it. And as you've got it prepped here for the final part of this part one review, I can see that you two did nothing that I described that we were going to do in the initial video. And I'm kind of not sure what you've done because I see the two SSDs we talked about. That's yes. it. Check, check, you did that. The Optane drive, we definitely didn't talk about. The GPU wasn't even in the conversation, and the high-speed NIC is not there. So what the heck have you guys done to this thing? So we realized as we're looking at this platform, there's a lot of uh, potential compute performance. Okay, we got our QLC devices. We have our Optane drive. We wanted Optane... Optane's not even in the business anymore. Why would you bother putting that card in here? It's fast and it fits. It's fast and it fits, but so is the NIC that we were gonna put in here. I mean, well, yeah. It, we left it out for other better purposes. Okay, fine. Why is there a GPU in here? The, the, the system, the storage doesn't need a GPU. TrueNAS doesn't need a GPU. There's no reason for a GPU to be in here. <laughs> well, the stock output's only VGA. It doesn't get to a 4K monitor. Okay, so you put it in here so we can get to the monitor. Yes. Is that the only reason? Because with, with <laughs> you and Jordan get Limeritas going, I don't trust the output. Probably. And there are some other subtle changes you can't really see on camera, but... Okay. This motherboard supports a lot. We had to, uh, we upgraded things. We went from that, uh, it was either an eight or six core CPU. Wait, you put a different CPU in here? Yeah. yeah. What, what'd you do, an 8280 just because the OLS? No, that's a little too much, uh, a little too much on the power. We're using a uh, 6230 uh, Intel Gold Xeon. <laughs> okay, and you didn't bother to even put more RAM in it, which would have been the most obvious, best thing you could have done for TrueNAS because it has 32 gigs already. I mean, it's pretty useful for certain tasks. Okay, so we've got this reconfigured. So forget everything you heard in part one about what I wanted to do with this system, what Jordan agreed to do with this system. Kevin and Jordan get a little uh, sauced on social media and this is what happens. I do have to admit though, for all the stupid things you guys do, this is not the stupidest. No, I mean, it's, it is highly useful and we've made it a little bit multi-purpose. All right, so all we got to do now is boot and then get this thing going. Oh, you yeah. wanted the clicker? So once this gets set up, the process for configuring TrueNAS on a box like this, like what's step one? Uh, step one, you, uh, I mean, from here, it was a uh, fully built and tested system. We, just, right. oh, we add our own storage. Right, but for the software, if I want to load TrueNAS here as the next step, what do we need to do? Uh, you'd go to the uh, TrueNAS site, you'd download the ISO, put it onto a thumb drive, stick it in and install. And that's if you want to install it yourself and get up and running. And so in that configuration, we've got 15, 22 terabyte hard drives here. We've got 60 terabytes of QLC flash for a faster uh, share there to be able to share this out over the... Well, the 280 gig um, Optane. For super fast? Yes. True NAS share. Or you, I guess you could put a cache in front of the hard drives. Yeah, we used it for other things. <laughs> what do you mean used it for other things? What can I say? So we've got posts, we've got the bio, so that's a good sign. The thing's probably going to boot, which is always a, a good... Uh, it's surprisingly fast. It's a very versatile platform. 
Well, I mean, it's effectively a server board that's squished into, uh, well, it's not even really squished. It's a, a small really server board. A really nice server board. So in most areas where it might be like an integrated Xeon or low on Intel, I mean, this is a nice Intel scalable system. Yeah, and that's what gave you the flexibility to drop in a faster CPU, which, again, we don't really need for this use case. Yes, we do. <laughs> TrueNAS will run on anything. It doesn't really need that much hardware. It may not be TrueNAS. See, this is why I should never leave the lab and trust Jordan and Kevin to do much of anything. It's the perfect platform from TrueNAS. We just it's installed it's gonna, Windows. It's, I hate everything about you. <laughs> so, they installed Windows on this and turned it into effectively a very expensive gaming PC while I wasn't watching. Well, and it's this not is just what, a gaming PC. So we, It's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a NAS. It's Windows Server 2022, and what we, what we realized is instead of worrying about the high-speed NIC, put it in the GPU, and then we added Windows, and yes. we're going to be using storage spaces. Okay. I get that the board gives you that flexibility and that the HL15 chassis will enable that, but that is so far beyond what this was meant to be. So what worked pretty nice, this box is what, 2K uh, in its built configuration? The all the way through fully configured and burned in, yeah. Yeah, so say we added our hard drives into it. Um, you could add which a little flavor of uh, your NVMe flash. Which we the did. The CPU didn't necessarily have to be upgraded, but we did. For no reason, okay. And the thing can fit a GPU and they include all the wires for PCA, which I can't go without, like someone assumed that someone would do this. So you're blaming 45 drives for giving you the tools to enable this lunacy. Yes, but... But you guys installed Steam and Cyberpunk on this thing too, which and is... Crisis, but... All of which are far outside of where, what we agreed we were doing with this review. Correct, but what's fun though is you have a $2,000 NAS box, you add your own storage, which that's comparable to... Synology and QNAP. Okay. And you could install and use this as your main system and have shares going out from it or storage spaces. I mean, yes, it's not. And game on an A4000. That's what you're suggesting? Yes, I mean, build the <laughs> ultimate uh, home media box. Okay. This is the end of part one. They installed Windows, Steam, Crisis, Cyberpunk, and whatever else on this thing. That wasn't the plan. I lost my NIC for high speed interconnect, and they put in a GPU and a needlessly fast and expensive Optane drive upgraded the CPU for no reason whatsoever. It didn't even need to be upgraded for the game. Exactly right. And then mix and matched uh, WD-22 terabyte golds and reds in the same All chassis. All zero. We'll be back with part two.